<laughs> well, hello, everybody. We have got four of the crew in today. We've got Mr. Boyer. He is the newest member of our pack, a little four and a half month old baby dog who belongs to Nicole. And then, of course, we've got the birthday week boy. And now he thinks because he had a birthday this week that he can do whatever he wants to. So, yeah, he's being, uh, well, he's just going to probably snuggle up and fall asleep right here. And then you know how happy he gets with his five pounds. And then we've got Nicole and myself. Um, where is Miss Olivia? Olivia is in BC. Yep. She's out there for a family birthday, I believe. It was a surprise. Yep. So if her family in BC is watching and they don't know about the birthday surprise. surprise. <laughs> and then we also have Miss Ella who is out at the lake for a well-deserved long weekend. But we know that you guys are probably have some plans for the long weekend, which may include traveling with your furry guys. <laughs> And so what we wanted to talk to you about today is kibble storage as well as what is our best option when it comes to bowls for the furry guys. Because there is bad options, you guys, and there are great options. And we always want, we always want great options because anything in our pet's life that we can control, that can contribute to their health and well-being, we want to do. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the environment that we create for them. So the cleaners that we use in, in our house, the chemicals that we may use in or outside of the house with regards to weed control, candles that we burn, bowls that we use. There are so many different things that we can do to control the environment and make it more beneficial for them and less harmful. Everything that is within our control, that's what we want to do. So. First things first, I'm going to put the monkey down now. Yeah, he's not going to be happy, but I'm going to put him down because we have some props, okay? So first things first, you guys, when it comes to storage for kibble, and you have probably, if you've been with us for any length of time, you have likely seen that we have talked about, we want absolutely no direct contact ever with kibble and plastic. This is a big no-no, you guys. So if you are storing your food, the best, and, and let me back up. There are many pet supply stores or many stores that sell pet supplies that sell those great big plastic pet food containers. Here is why we do not want to put kibble in direct contact with plastic. Kibble is fresh in the bag until the minute that we crack that bag open. As soon as we open the bag, the fats in the food, this applies to kibble, you guys, the fats in the food is exposed to light and air. When that happens, the fats start to oxidize and the food starts to rot. So, first things first, when we open a bag of kibble, traditional kibble, doesn't matter how good or bad the kibble is, we want to be able to use it within 28 days. If we can't use our kibble within 28 days, look for a smaller bag so that you can use it within 28 days. Or if you have freezer space, freeze what you cannot use within 28 days. The other option is keep your kibble in the freezer. Get yourself an airtight glass container that would hold about a week's worth of food or a couple days worth of food and, and pull from the freezer, put it in your airtight glass container to keep your kibble as fresh as possible. This is going to ensure optimum freshness. So we are never going to take the bag, we are never going to take the bag and pour the food into the kibble. Never, never, never. That's a bad idea, you guys. <clears throat> because not only is our kibble rotting as it's exposed to light and air, but because of that fat oxidization and this being plastic full of other, a host of other toxins and chemicals, that oxidizing fats create a chemical reaction with the plastic, which then leaches the toxins from the plastic into the food. And I'm going to tell you, when I had my baby boy Spencer, and he was a German Shepherd, 
I always used to say, oh, Spencer's favorite day is new food day because I knew no better. I bought my great big plastic food container at the pet store. I didn't want a big open bag of dog food in my kitchen. And I would come home every day and I would dump that plastic, or pardon me, I would dump that kibble into the plastic container. And Spencer could care less about eating except on new food day. And I always just thought, well, it's new food. He thinks it's different. No, it's because I was constantly feeding my dog rotting food and I had no idea. This is why we talk about the things we do, you guys, because we want to make sure that you do not make the same mistakes that we make. And when we know better, then we can always do better. So if you have a plastic container that you have been keeping your kibble in, but you will not be keeping your kibble in anymore, you are going to wash that out and sanitize it as best as possible. Unfortunately, because plastic breaks down over time, there is tiny pores and crevices that you will never be able to clean, which is why that rotting and chemical leaching happens. Take your entire bag and put it right in, this is a bad example you guys because this is a very small plastic container, but take your entire bag, put it inside, making sure that you keep this bag as sealed as possible. Keeping your kibble in a cool dark place is best, but keep it as sealed as possible to prevent as much light and air from getting at it as you can. And then put the lid on. The bags that pet food manufacturers make for our food already has preservation techniques built into the bag. So the best thing we can do is keep our food in the bag. The reason that we want to talk about this now is because it's summer. Everybody's traveling. We're going back and forth with the hounds to the lake, right? Many, many times it's going to be, well, I don't want to drag a big bag of food out there. So I'm just going to fill a Ziploc or I'm just going to take my little container that will last us for the weekend. And we are going to say it again. At all costs, avoid direct contact with kibble and plastic, regardless of what you're using it for. Which leads us to our next point. Do you have anything to add, Miss Nicole? I've just taken No, over. we had a question that asked, uh, is it the same thing for air-dried food? No. No. And here's why. So, kibble has to be processed in just such a way. Um, and we all know that that is what is referred to as the extrusion process. So when kibble is made, for those of you who may not know, when kibble is made, the raw ingredients, which would include the meat and the vegetables and all of the things, the first step in the process is to cook this into a big slurry, a big Doggy wet stew of ooh. Sounds really gross. <laughs> it, it sounds really gross. And honestly, if you saw some of the information out there about what happens in these kibble manufacturing plants, you never feed another your dog day. kibble again. Another ever. day. <laughs> yeah, and that will be another day. So first, first, first things first, every all of the raw ingredients are, are boiled and cooked at very high temperatures into a big slurry. Then the liquid must be removed because this is a dry food. So the liquid is removed. This is called the extrusion process. Oftentimes, this is what happens when we get powdered meat. And then the things are at, the starches are added to make the, pe the kibble into its little pellets. Once that goes through another high, high, high heat process to bake it into its little tiny chunks, then we have to spray the food with fat and we add, well, the, sorry, the pre, I got it back up. The premix is added to before it's baked again. The premix is where we're adding in um, vitamins and minerals that get cooked out in the first time. And then the food is sprayed with fat. So an air dried food goes through a very different process to remove moisture and fat is not sprayed onto it. So air dried, freeze dried, dehydrated, it does not apply to those foods because they don't, even carnivore, which is an air dried whole food nugget, there is no additional fat sprayed onto this. So there's very different rules that apply to this when it comes to storage and how long it'll last. That's another TikTok. But do, or, we, do we still recommend plastic for that? No, no. And, that, and so I, I wouldn't recommend plastic for you or your pets. 
Um, I have eliminated um, almost every piece of plastic from my house. I went out and I replaced all of my dishes with glass, like a Pyrex glass, because I can sterilize glass. I cannot sterilize plastic. And lots of people are gonna say, well, you could just use bleach. I don't want to eat off of things that I have cleaned with bleach, and I certainly don't want that for my dog. You think about how bleach smells for us, think about that times a thousand for our dog. So now we're gonna clean stuff with bleach and then put their food in and then serve, nah. Yeah. So no plastic, you no guys, plastic if you can. anything. The thinner the plastic is too, and I know everybody uses sandwich bags. I still do. I try to buy the thicker ones and I am moving slowly to all of those reusable silicone bags. That's what I'm moving to. Um, but the thinner the plastic, like a saran wrap, a baggie, a Ziploc, the more likely it is for those plastics to leach and they are one time use, you guys. So if you fill up a bag, a Ziploc bag of kibble, throw it in the freezer, don't continue to use that bag. You have used it once, get rid of it when it's empty if that's how you're going to do it, okay? So hopefully that helps. I think that answered the question, yeah. It said, what if the bag ripped and can't be resealed? So uh, so in that particular instance, um, like, if you're, like if you're talking about your dog food bag, yeah. that has, okay. So if you have airtight sealed glass containers, if you have stainless steel containers, as much as you can, I would probably still keep the bag and put it into my container. If you don't have a container, get yourself, like I said, an airtight sealed glass container or a stainless steel container, or if you must, transport that food into a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer. Keep though, make sure you keep information about what that bag is, the barcode as well as, I'm not gonna be able to find it because I'm looking for it, my expiry date, wherever that is, because it'll have- On the have, top of the bag. Oh, right there, in front of my face. So keep the information that says what the lot number and expiry in the event that anything happens with regards to a recall or anything, then you at least know the information. Okay. okay. I think you got it all. Okay. No well, plastic. Use glass or stainless steel. That's right. Recap. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we, we'll definitely, we can go through to make yeah, sure that we don't no. miss any questions. So we're going to look at bowls, you guys. Right what we just said, no plastic. So this is, this is a malamine, but at, at the end of the day, malamine is plastic. We don't want to have any direct contact with their food and plastic. So if we are serving out of plastic bowls, it is now time to go and invest in some really good bowls so that you know that you are contributing to the positive aspects of their health versus unintentionally negatively impacting their health. Because if we're eating food out of plastic, plastic still has toxins. Um, and so when food is sitting on it, here's the thing too, a lot of people think, I gotta be really careful with raw food because it's raw meat, but kibble is dry food, it lasts forever. And so much for do not disturb. Okay. Um, People always think that dry food is, it, you know, it lasts forever and it doesn't matter if it sits out all day. That's the worst thing that we can actually do with it. And especially if we've got it sitting in plastic. So there is 75 times more issues of bacteria with dry food than there is with raw food. And that is because we think it's dry. We put it in the bowl. The dog eats it. The next day we fill up the bowl again. The dog eats it. He licks every crumb out of there. So we think that's pretty clean. I don't even need to wash it. But we would probably never ever do that with raw meat. We are going to wash every single dish. So 75 more times chance of getting bacteria from a dry food than a raw food. So our worst, worst option that we never ever want to use is a plastic bowl for our puppers and kitties. We don't want to feed them. We don't want to give their water out of plastic. Get rid of the plastic. If you want to use plastic for you, you can. I'm not telling everybody to go out and get glass, but I'm going to say for your dogs and your cats, make sure that you get rid of any plastic feeding devices. Okay? Next on the list, and this is going to be tough to see, but I'm going to try to show you. 
ceramic, okay? A lot of people think, well, ceramic, it's kind of like glass. It's not like glass. Well, I don't know if you can see, you guys. Uh, kind of. Can you see these tiny little hairline cracks? This is what happens with ceramic and why ceramic comes in as the second worst bowl that we can use. Ceramic over time will again break down. Those little cracks tend to be, oh, there they are is the best that you can see them, but I don't know if the camera will pick them up. <clears throat> Technically, or what tends to happen with ceramic is those cracks are in the finish but we can't clean inside those cracks. Again, and that's where bacteria just sits and grows is in those little cracks in the finish. Yep. The other thing that can happen when those finishes break down is they can be toxic. So depending upon where you got the ceramic from, how old it is, depending on what they use to finish it, some of those finishing products can be very toxic and now they've cracked open the bacteria is growing it's a recipe for disaster you guys so number one worst bowl plastic number two ceramic we're getting into good options now a silicone bowl is a good option because it can be sterilized it can't develop those cracks that host the bacteria and it doesn't leach toxins we just have to make sure that the pupper won't eat his silicone bowl because sometimes that can happen. <laughs> so there are different types of silicone bowls. A lot of licky mats are made from silicone and silicone is a good option because we have the ability to sterilize it um, and it can't leach those icky toxins that can come from a plastic or from a ceramic coating. I like, you know? I like silicone. Silic Fantastic for traveling, you guys. Zainer has many silicone bowls. Um, I keep one in my truck and one in my car and then I keep a couple for when we are traveling because who knows where we're going to be. They pack up, super small. There are others that we have that don't fold up but they're the no spill dishes which are fantastic for Even the vehicle. Clips or to the leash. Clips to the leash if we need. Can you see? Take it on a walk. Yes. All right, our next, this is the second best option you guys. And it is a glass dish similar to Pyrex. We can absolutely sanitize glass. There is no leaching. If it cracks, you're throwing it out. But that is the downside of glass, is that it can break. So if you've got a rough eater, <laughs> ah, look at that, a rough you eater. A dog pun. I totally did. <laughs> I didn't even try it. Um, but if we've got a, a furry guy who's a little bit, you know, aggressive at the bowl or he likes to spin his bowls around or slap them around the kitchen, glass may not be our best option because it can break. And I mean, if we drop the bowl, it can break. And we certainly don't want shattered glass all around the furry guys. Were you going to say something? Uh, no, someone just asked, uh, is silicone not similar to plastic? Is it not full of toxins? want to make sure you recap that. It isn't because it is a food grade silicone. When we're talking about pet dishes, these are food grade silicone. So then there is no leaches, no toxins that can leach from it. If it was a non-food grade silicone or maybe a silicone from, no, I don't know, uh, a store that might <laughs> rhyme with Waller Bore, <laughs> you know, or Wallarama. Um, then we can't guarantee the quality of the silicone and it, it's likely not food grade and that is something I would stay away from. So good point because we want to make sure that our silicone is food grade, which is also the case when it comes to our best option for bowls. You guys, the winner, the winner, number one choice out there is stainless steel. And you want to make sure that it is a quality stainless steel, 18 point or better, and also food grade. We don't want recycled metals. If you come across a stainless steel bowl and you look at the price and you go, woo, eight bucks, that is not stainless steel. That is not quality stainless steel. And I guarantee you that that would be some sort of metal with recycled metals in it. Stainless steel is not cheap, you guys. It is an investment, but it is the best thing that we can do for the furry guys. Because, 
because stainless steel can absolutely be completely sanitized, never going to have those cracks, no bacteria is going to sit there. So you want to make sure that your stainless steel is a food grade, high quality stainless steel. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's not going to be cheap. When we find good quality stainless steel bowls, they will be expensive. But it is an investment. It is an investment in their health because, in their health because it is part of their environment that we can control. And that's making sure that we've got a good quality bowl. So again, if we're going into some of our stores that rhyme with Waller store or, you know, those kinds, they do have metal bowls in there, but those will not be stainless steel. I guarantee you that. You can look to make sure that the bowl says that it is a food grade stainless steel, or in some instances, so with these particular ones, the bottom peels off and that's usually where you'll find it. These, they list that it's food grade stainless steel, so we know it's good quality, but some stainless steel bowls will actually have the grading engraved right into it. So it will say that it's an 18 point stainless steel or better. And they're not gonna be cheap. They're not gonna be cheap, you guys, but it's the best thing that we can do. So Zayner, he eats twice a day. So he actually has eight bowls. Uh, his, of course, are a little smaller, so they're a little cheaper, but he has eight bowls because if I don't get to do the dishes every single day, at least he always has a clean bowl. And that is, I'm not gonna feed him out of the same bowl twice, so he gets a clean bowl all the time. In instances where I've put all of his bowls in the dishwasher, which I like to do at least once a week, just to like sterilize them more than what I'm doing when I'm washing them, then I take a Pyrex dish and I mix up his supper in that and that's what he eats out of is a glass, uh, oh my God. Stainless steel. Pyrex. Oh, glass. Glass Pyrex okay. bowl is what he gets if all of his dishes are in the dishwasher. So, whoop, hang on a second here. I saw some comments. Hello, hello everybody, I have been neglecting you. Catherine says, I use Tupperware storage containers that keep the kibble fresh. Keep them in the bag before you put them in that Tupperware, Catherine. And Mimsy has the collapsible dish to eat out of. That's perfect. Um, Jill, I love those bowls. I need to pick up smaller ones for the goat's milk and keep, you got the smallest ones there is, Missy, so we can't get them any smaller. However, maybe a little bit. Nah, not so much. Not really. We brought these out too. This is another set. You actually get three. They come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. This is perfect regardless of what you're feeding. Messy Mutts tends to advertise or promote this as kind of like, hey, for raw feeders when you're on the go, any feeders who are on the go, I use these with Zayner all the time. He eats a freeze-dried raw diet, but when I know he's going to be at the office late and he's not going to be home in time for supper, when I'm making his breakfast, I make his supper, I slap my lid on and off we go. This is for anybody. So whether you're feeding kibble all the way up to raw, these are perfect options for when you're traveling. If you're just going out to the lake for the night, pack the food at home in the dog's dish, put his lid on it, and you're good to go. Um, so, and, sorry, and Jill, these might be a titch smaller than what you got, but not much. That's about as small as they get. Yeah. Um, all right, TikTokers, hang on a second. I think we got most of them at the beginning. Did but... we? Okay. Um, hello, doggo. Is it the same thing for dry? Okay, yeah. I did that. Oh um, my God, thank you. I have five dogs that never knew this. Perfect, now you do. Do you guys recommend the Honest Kitchen for food? Absolutely. Honest Kitchen is um, a dehydrated food. Honest Kitchen is one of very few pet foods that are human grade certified. That means that they literally apply to be considered human grade. And when they did that, it changed their entire process and it changed all of their packaging because human requirement requirements for human food versus pet food, very different because most pet food falls into the category of feed. So it doesn't go by the same rules that we do. For example, you do not walk into a grocery store down the cleaning aisle where all of the bleach and laundry soap is and see our food you never do, but you see pet food, food, because oh, it's feed. And that's why it can be down that aisle because it doesn't fall under the same 
uh, requirements or regulations that our food does. So Honest Kitchen is a fantastic food. It's a dehydrated food. They have original recipes, which you add water to, and then you have kind of like a porridge consistency. And they also have their clusters, which is the original recipe, but made into a very easy scoop and go cluster. It's human grade, the hounds love it. Um, and, then, and then that's with their packaging. All of their packaging had to, to change to be compliant with human food processes and requirements. So, oh, I just had something else I was gonna say about the Honest Kitchen. Anyways, yes, Honest Kitchen is a great food. <laughs> okay. I think you covered it all, so. What if the big ripped? Okay, we got that, so air dried food. Can go in Ziplocs if needed, yes. I mean, all of our food can, but I would not reuse that Ziploc. If I've used it once, I don't use it again, okay? Oh, and Jill says she has those, perfect. Uh, thank you, I used stainless steel bowls when I had my dog, never used plastic bowls for you, absolutely. Is silicone, no, we did that one. How can we clean the bowls? How can That's you, a good one. Ah, ha, ha, ha. let me oh, show we you. We have that. solutions. <laughs> These are like my most favorite things ever. They're everywhere around here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I use them for everything. Um, so these are a silicone bowl cleaner. They've got kind of a, a softer side and then they've got a more aggressive side. And you know, we've got a TikTok coming about this, you guys. You know that slime you get around your water dish? Mm. Yep. I'll tell you why that happens. The first thing is if we are not washing and drying the bowl, drying oh, is the key yeah. piece. If we are not washing and drying the bowl in between every water fill, that slime ring, that's the bacteria from our dog's mouth. And so as they're drinking, because they don't drink like we do, right? Their face right in the bowl, all of the things are going around, tongue, water, bacteria and it sits in the water and then it collects on the side of your dish. If you then just dump, rinse, refill, place it on the floor, that ring will always be there and that is the bacteria from their mouth. So the best thing that we can do with our water dishes, drain, wash, dry thoroughly, fill. If you can, do it every day. If you've got multiple dogs, do it every day. If you've got one dog, you know, you can get away with doing that every three-ish days, let's say twice a week to make it easy. Um, but always, always, always dry in between fills and then we're gonna get rid of that slime. But these are fantastic for also getting rid of that slime or any debris. I love these things, you guys. I use them on Zayner's dishes and I use them on my dishes and I love them. So that's why Nicole said, they're all over the store because I've got one in the bathroom, I've got one in our back room, and then I've got, you know, a couple in my kitchen. Um, okay. And, now, sorry, I just want to, okay, I use stainless steel bowls for my dog. Perfect. What brand are the ones with the lids? These are Messy Mutts. These are Messy Mutts. This is what you're looking for. They do come in a small, medium, and large. They used to be called small, medium, and large. Now they're called medium, large, and extra large. But this is the medium. This is, it's, it's a small. This is what I use for Zayner, and he's a five pound. Uh -huh. Zignature went up to $151 a bag. You know what's interesting about Zignature? I don't know if you guys saw this. We shared it on our stories. Zignature is currently settling a $2 million lawsuit because it has been found that in almost all of their recipes that they claimed were grain-free and chicken-free, they contained grains and chicken. Zignature is not a food that we sell. Um, I know that a lot of dogs eat it for the novel proteins, um, but this is what happens when we have great big companies making our pets food. So um, it's not called the Zignature Lawsuit, but I'm sure if you Googled Zignature Lawsuit, you would find it that way. Uh, but it is under the name of their parent company who makes Zignature. So uh, you could you could definitely look at, like Open Farm is cheaper than $151 for a big bag. So that's something I would look at. 
Thank you. You guys are the best. Thank you. Should I have two different bowls for two dogs? I would have... Now, well, okay, when I say this, if I have two dogs, I'd have four bowls. Um, at a minimum, I'd have four bowls for their food, and I would have one for water. They can share a bowl, but when they're sharing a bowl, I'm going to make sure that I'm washing and drying the bowl every single day. But I would have two bowls and it, for each of them, so I would have four. It doesn't mean that this dog can only eat out of this bowl and this dog can only eat out of this bowl. It just means that you're not going to be having to wash a bowl every single time, but if that's not, if they're eating twice a day, right? Um, if they're all the same, that's perfectly fine. We're just gonna make sure that they're always washed in between feedings and then we can, anybody can use the same bowl. Um, do you recommend Purina Pro Plan? We do not recommend any Purina product. Purina, made by our good friends over at Nestle, who make chocolate bars. Um, we do not recommend Purina. If you go onto Purina's website, they have pages, pages and pages and pages of all of the ingredients that they use. And they proudly display all of the controversial and harmful ingredients that they put in their food. And then they come up with their marketing buzzwords to say why this is a great addition to the food. And I'm going to give you an example. They have BHA and BHT in some of their formulas. BHA and BHT are synthetic preservatives that are still allowed in dog food, not in cat food but it's allowed in dog food. BHA and BHT are used to prevent lipstick from drying out. Uh, it's used to prevent embalming fluid from drying out. It's used to prevent jet fuel from drying out. It's used um, in pesticides to prevent them from drying out. So BHT and BHA are proven to be toxic harmful ingredients that are still being used in the pet industry. Purina proudly displays this on their website saying BHA and BHT are part of the ingredients that we use and it's to, to ensure maximum freshness of the food. They don't go on to tell you that these, these are synthetic and toxic and harmful and cause organ damage. They just say that it makes their, fruit, their food fresh. So they proudly display all of their controversial and harmful ingredients. So I am not shy to tell people about them, uh, but Purina is, ne I, there's not one Purina product out there that I would say, yes, use that, none. So, so that was a very long answer to say, no, we do not. Um, well, thanks, oops, so, so sorry, I flipped to the top there. Um, how do you feel about Hill Science? So, um, Pophead78, we have a video in our playlists on TikTok called Beyond the Bag, and we've got a video all about Hills. Hills is not a favorite as well. Hills is made by Colgate Palmolive. Um, you guys see me looking over here, and unless you've been in the store, you're not sure what I'm looking at. We have a great big poster of all the big pet food manufacturers who make the different brands of food. Hills, including their veterinary line, is made by Colgate Palmolive. Um, and if you're making everything from toothpaste and soap, how much do you really care about the quality of the dog food you're feeding me or my pet? Um, but Hills, again, uh, very high carb, uh, very low ingredients, chicken byproducts, those kinds of things. Uh, they do use some controversial, I believe they use one harmful ingredient. But my biggest beef with Hills Science is that in 2018, they had one of the biggest recalls in the past decade that literally killed thousands upon thousands of dogs. Um, they knew about it in 2018, in November of 2018, and they did not tell us until April of 2019, six months after the fact when dogs and cats were losing their lives and becoming very, very, very sick because of the massive recall, which was excess vitamin D. Vitamin D in excess is very toxic to dogs, especially, um, and they knew this and they told no one until six months later after thousands of dogs lost their lives. They are now going through their lawsuit 
where they are compensating pet parents for the loss of their family member by paying them a hundred bucks, maybe 140 if you're lucky. Not a fan of Hilt, not a fan. I can say this live on TikTok because it goes away afterwards. But Facebook, you're gonna see this forever. Um, you are so knowledgeable, you're amazing. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, how can I feed raw, complete, as a lot contain blueberries, mines, and allergy? So there are raw foods out there that contain no veggies, no fruits. Um, we care, I'm not sure where you're located, but in Canada, Bold by Nature has two different options. They have their Select and they have their Mega. Select is their original recipe, which contains no fruits and veggies. It is all meat and tripe, of course, and the bone, but meat and tripe is what makes it up the majority. Um, they came out with Mega for multi-dog households or bigger furry guys. Um, and they replace the tripe with organic vegetables. So even their uh, mega option does not contain blueberries, it is only vegetables. And I'm pretty sure I have not seen blueberries in Primal or Iron Will. So those are the three different raws that we sell. Um, the other option is if you need to control specifically what is going into a raw diet, uh, Dr. Becker, Dr. Judy Morgan, um, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, anyways, many, many, many holistic vets out there, and you can go to the American Holistic Vet Association to get a list of all of them. Um, they have recipes out there, and they will be complete and balanced, and you control what goes in there. So you can avoid any recipes that have blueberries that might be uh, cause allergy issues. Blue buffalo. And this is Rodman. Um, no, Blue Buffalo is a big no-no too. Uh, Blue Buffalo makes it easy for us to figure out that we shouldn't be feeding them. If you Google Blue Buffalo lawsuits, you will see all of the lawsuits. Um, Blue Buffalo is the biggest pet food manufacturer in the world. And the best thing that they have going for them is their marketing. <laughs> and that's it. What happens in the bag is not what they talk about on the outside of the bag. Blue Buffalo came out with the whole, I mean, uh, saying the same kinds of things we do. Look at the first ingredients and make sure you're looking at the ingredients and all the things. But they use byproducts, they use controversial ingredients, and they've got lawsuits coming out the yin-yang for animals who, there's been lead in the food, there's been sharp metal pieces that dogs have lost their lives. If you Google Blue Buffalo lawsuits, you will see all of the lawsuits that are out there against Blue Buffalo. So not a food we recommend. Oh, oh it keeps doing that, sorry. Mm. Oh boy, sorry, sorry, sorry. I already do home prepped cooked diet for one with bowel disease, but want other raw. Yeah, that's, I mean, so that's perfect. So you're already halfway there knowing what you're doing. Making sure that when you're doing a home cooked meal, if we're home cooking for the furry guys, it is gently cooked. Because remember, you have never seen a wolf standing outside barbecuing his supper. So gently cooked, not cooked the way we would eat it. Kind of that blue rare type thing. I'm not eating that ever. Uh, is Carnivore a good product? Carnivore is one of the best. This is Cash, Cash's Jeep Mama. Um, Carnivore is one of the best foods out there for a dry option. It is a raw alternative. It is an air-baked whole food nugget. Why do I say that? When we look at most kibble, no, no. when we look at all kibble, you are going to see on their list of ingredients, this is gonna be tough for you guys to see, but when we're looking at a list of ingredients for kibble, you're gonna see that salt is usually halfway down the list. Remember, we always, always, always want to see our fruits and veggies before the salt in our list of ingredients. Ingredients are listed in order of size, from biggest to smallest. Salt can only in normal food. This does not apply to prescription food because in prescription food, the rules don't apply. They up the salt to make the animal thirsty, to make them drink more, to clean the organs. That's the trick behind prescription food, you guys. Um, but in normal food, salt can only be 1% of the entire bag. That's why we want to see fruits and vegetables before the salt. 
because that means that they're actually in the bag and we're actually going to provide some sort of nutrients for the animal that's eating these fruits and vegetables. If they're after the salt, we'd be lucky if there was a whole blueberry in the bag. So always, always, always fruits and veggies before the salt. When we look at carnivore, and now I can't even see you guys, third last ingredient is where salt is. This is why it is a whole food nugget because we are getting all of the nutrients from the whole foods. Salt can only make up 1% of that bag. So everything that comes before it, we know is more than 1%. They don't use any synthetics where remember, if you were here at the beginning when I was talking about how kibble is made, synthetic vitamins and nutrients have to be added because they're all cooked out of the food. This is, is air baked, so different process, less heat, and we don't cook the nutrients out of the food, so the nutrients are coming from the food. That's why it's considered a whole food nugget. So carnivore, yes, we love carnivore. And what about open farm? Open farm is the only kibble that we sell, you guys. Open farm, it's like I planted these people, but I didn't, I promise you. This is uh, man, root de biz. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Open Farm is the only kibble that we sell. It checks off all of the boxes. If you've been with us, you have seen us say, in fact, that was our post today on our Facebook and Instagram and stories. When you're looking for a dry food, you want to look for a protein rich, nutrient dense, low carb food. Open Farm checks all of those boxes. They're a Canadian made company. Uh, they use their clean ingredients. They only work with GAP certified farmers. That means the ethical and humane treatment of the animals. Um, they're all about transparency and providing a good quality product. So yes, Open Farm is the only kibble that we sell. It is a premium option. And if we're going to feed dry, we wanna make sure that it is a premium option. And then we can boost that bowl. We can level up our bowl by adding bone broth or goat's milk or freeze-dried raw or wet food or raw food less processed options it's kind of the equivalent is traditional kibble is kind of like us going to eat at a fast food restaurant every day at greasy burger and fries when we move to a premium kibble it's kind of like now we've chosen a sub it is still a processed option we can't get away from processing when it comes to kibble but we can find a better food than a greasy burger and fries, we can get that sub. And then we can improve that sub. We can add a glass of milk, we can add a fruit cup, we can add the veggie dish beside. That's what we can do with a premium kibble as well. Start with a premium base and improve it, okay? Can we see the poster? You can, but just give me half a second here. Um, what are your thoughts on blue? So we just covered that, we're not fans of blue, so and Blue Buffalo, your thoughts. Thank you, I'll be changing out. Perfect. Any suggestions for high quality, small breed dog food for a three-year-old chihuahua? So, exactly what I said. If we want to, our first recommendation is always going to be a biologically appropriate meal. And what that means is that it is a fresh, raw, whole diet, okay? If that doesn't fit with your lifestyle, because we get that, that is not always the case for everybody. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, if raw doesn't fit with your lifestyle, raw does not have to make up the whole diet. Raw can absolutely be a portion of the diet. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing. So if we're going to feed dry, and the reason we talk so much about dry, but we advocate for biologically appropriate foods, is that 80% of pet parents today still feed kibble. So we know that we have to educate the masses in order to get them into the minority until the minority becomes the majority. So dry foods, again, we just talked about that, protein rich, nutrient dense, low carb. You can always go on our website, at the bottom of every page, you will see what grade is my kibble. Click there, it's a little worksheet, it is not electronic, you guys can't fill it out online, but you can print it off or you can just follow along sit down with your bag of food and you fill out the worksheet and you will assign a grade to your kibble. We only ever, ever want to feed a grade A kibble. B's and C's might have cut it in high school, but they do not cut it for our pet's food. We need a grade A kibble. So you fill out that worksheet and it will give you a score and it will tell you what grade your kibble is. So look for a grade A. And 
Sobaka Puppy is in UK. I already control a home cooked and don't have all okay time for raw diet too. That's okay, that's okay. Like I said, you can always look at a commercial raw as a portion of the meal. If you don't have time to prepare foods cooked at home by you or raw diets, because it is a lot of work, you guys. It, and I say that because it's a lot of work to ensure that the, that the meal is complete and balanced. We always want to ensure that we are feeding a complete and balanced diet. Does that mean that my, my home cooked or my raw made food at home has to be balanced every single day? No, because depending on my day, I might whip over to Tim Hortons for a donut for breakfast and then McDonald's for lunch and then I grab a pizza on the way home. Not a great option, doesn't happen very often anymore. Um, but my, my, my diet was not balanced for that day, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna die. But over the week, I'm going to make sure that I get those fruits and veggies and proteins and all of the things that make a complete, doubt about, complete and balanced diet for a human. I'm gonna make sure that I do that over the week. So one day of an unbalanced meal is not a big deal. But if you're gonna be cooking for your animal regularly or preparing raw foods at home for your animal regularly, you need to ensure that overall in a week, you will be preparing balanced meals. If you don't have time, that, that's totally understandable because lots of people don't have time. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of work. So if you want to include some fresh food, and I'm telling you, you do, there are so many furry guys out there that will go their entire lives and never get one piece of fresh food. That's a sad thought. We need to incorporate. What do they say to us? What have you been told your whole life when it comes to your own nutrition? <laughs> Less processed food, more whole fresh foods. Our animals are the same. Less processed foods, and by that I mean kibble. Kibble is the most processed food we can give them, you guys. Less processed food, more fresh whole foods. 20% of the diet can be fresh whole foods. That can be a less processed option in your local pet store. That can be food right out of your own fridge. Strawberries, mushrooms, cucumbers, broccoli, you name it. Get that in their bowl. You're making your salad and cutting off the ends of the cucumbers and the carrots that you don't want to put in your salad. Put it in their bowl. You are eating blueberries and bananas for breakfast. Give them some blueberries and chunks of bananas. Give them fresh whole foods, okay? Um, Broccoli is Boyer's new favorite. Yeah, <laughs> cucumbers are Zaners. Okay. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. Where did all these come from? I talked for way too long. <laughs> I was thinking that. But oh, I boy. Go. <laughs> oh boy. Oh uh, boy. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pick a couple of these that I think are important. Um, not that all of your questions aren't important, you guys, but that, that I think might apply to more folks. Um, my pup has so many allergies that he's currently on a vet prescribed vegetarian kibble diet. Let's get him off of that. Um, here's why, you guys. Allergies in the people space and in the pet space, they make up for about 2%. 2% of all people and, and animals truly have allergies. But we treat it like it's 40%. So you've tried this food, you've tried this food, you've tried that food, and your vet goes, oh, he's got allergies. Just throw him on a vegetarian diet. Likely not the case. Um, let me tell you how you can determine the difference between an allergy and an intolerance or sensitivity, which is much more frequent. Uh, uh, intolerances or sensitivities show up as digestive issues or throwing up, we've got diarrhea. Those are typically intolerances or sensitivities to certain foods or types or proteins. Allergies show up as an immune system response, hives, itchiness, red skin, those kinds of things, okay? Often, almost always, when we're having external issues, it is a symptom of something that is happening on the inside. Their health comes from their gut. Starts in their gut, comes from their gut. 
If we can get and keep the gut healthy, we can get and keep the animal healthy. Oftentimes, probiotics, just getting probiotics into those furry little bellies is almost enough to rebalance the gut. If your little furry guy has excessive issues, and this has been going on for a long time, that gut may be more unbalanced than probiotics will fix. In that instance, I would suggest you do an FMT. And the beautiful thing is, you guys, we now have, for you, 20% off FMT products through Doggy Biome. If you haven't heard of Doggy Biome, they are amazing. They are a company out of California. They are dedicated to researching through science and, um, and all of the research that they do, understanding canine and feline gut microbiome. That is where their health starts. And so if you go to the link in our bio, you will see, if you click on it, you will see Doggy Biome 20% off with this code. I would seriously suggest that you do that. If you've got a furry guy who has what your vet has said is allergies, uh, and regardless of whether it's digestive or skin, it doesn't matter if it's allergies or intolerances, do the FMT, you will be so thankful that you did. The FMT essentially, you guys, is a fecal microbiome transplant. So our furry guys who are having the issues are going to eat tiny little pills of freeze-dried poop from a healthy animal with, uh, there is no scent, there is no, no scent, no taste, no nothing but it will rebalance the gut and you will, and the world will open up with regards to what you will be able to feed your animal. Ah, uh, Bella enjoyed the blueberries included in Zaner's birthday ice cream. Yes, the furries <laughs> tend to like that. Um, okay. Um, instinct raw boosts. Instinct raw boosts, if I am remembering this correctly, is a kibble, coated in raw with little raw, freeze-dried raw chunks added. I know that Instinct has a food like that, I just don't know if that's what they call it. So here's my thoughts on that. That is, months ago we did a live on uh, Tricks of the Bay. We're gonna bring that one back because that's good information and we talked about this. When we are coating kibble and adding freeze-dried raw, that is a trick of the bag from the manufacturer. The reason is they are still using a mid to low grade kibble. They're coating it with a freeze dried raw and then adding freeze dried raw pieces into the bag. When we look, these foods read really good on paper. They look like they, you know, they're high in protein and they're low in carbs and all the things. The ingredients look good, but that is because they are describing the freeze dried. They're not talking about that crappy kibble that they just covered up with the freeze dried, which we hear it all the time. Pet parents come in and say, my dog just picks the freeze dried out and leaves the kibble. That's because they know, they know that that's not a great kibble and somebody's just trying to trick them into eating it. We don't want to trick them. Uh, the example I use all the time is that would be like you putting on cheese on kale for me just to trick me into eating the kale. I don't want to eat the kale. I can eat healthy, good food for me without being tricked into eating something I do not like. So we don't want to trick them, we don't want to encourage them or entice them to eat something they don't want. They're telling us in the best way they can, they are not a fan of this food. It is our job to find something that works for them that they love because food is such a big part of their lives, we want them to love their food, okay? So uh, soapbox, again you guys, I do this all the time. Um, no, not a fan of any of the kibbles that add freeze dry. I would rather you find a premium food that we know is a good base rather than paying more, because you do. They charge a ridiculous amount for this crappy kibble that they add freeze dry to. You could do the same thing and know that you're getting a premium kibble with a great freeze dried, and you've just done the same thing and you probably do it for cheaper. And you know it's better for your pet. Uh, Okay, okay. Thoughts on raw versus kibble food for an epileptic, epileptic dog. Um, biologically appropriate is always going to be our best bet. So I would probably say raw. 
You may be one of those pet parents that have been told that old wives' tale that epileptic dogs cannot have any food preserved with rosemary. Not true. Um, we believe this too. We had a customer, this is the first time we had heard about it. The customer came in and said, my food can't contain any rosemary because that will set off the epilepsy. And I learned months after that conversation, that is not the case. Rosemary extract used in premium kibbles is not at a high enough dose to ever trigger a seizure. So if that's kind of where you're going with the should I do kibble, should I do raw, I would say raw is the better option anyways because we're getting rid of all the unnecessary fillers that come with any kibble. But if you're looking at kibble, make sure that it's a premium kibble. Um, open farm, carnivore, both perfect options for a dog with epilepsy. Uh, beef is the one that doesn't have rosemary extract in the car, in the open farm, but don't worry about that. When I called the customer to tell her, oh my goodness, this was a wives sale and we don't have to worry about this, she started rotating all the, all the brands and had no issues. The other thing I'm gonna tell you if you have an epileptic pet, two things that I would absolutely include in the meal every time, sardines, coconut oil, okay? Sardines, uh, we, we have an, a blog on our website. If you just go on to, again, bottom of every page, beyond the bowl, it's called, that's our blog. Type in sardines and you will see all of the health benefits associated. Benefits, oh, I thought I said that wrong for a second. Um, you will see all of the health benefits that are associated with sardines and helping to reduce seizures is one of them but coconut oil, because of the MCTs, will also help reduce seizures, so you can easily add that to the bowl. Um, and we covered that. Airtight way to store the open farm freeze-dried raw once I open the bag. Safe in OXO container. I don't know what I'm, oh, OXO is one of those pet food containers. I would keep it in the bag. The freeze-dried raw, absolutely, I would keep it now. Freeze-dried raw, very different. It's a different process than kibble. Um, freeze-dried is considered space food, right? You guys, they make it, it's like the food that they would make for the army. You just have to add water and it's food again. Um, so typically, freeze-dried, though legally, they have to put a whatever it is or two or three year expiry date on it. Space food, freeze-dried food, that'll last like 25 years. So I would keep it in the bag that it comes in and like, if your OXO is big enough to put kibble in, put the whole bag of your kibble. Don't dump the whole bag. How about adding carrots and pumpkin seeds to my dog's open farm ancient grains salmon? Sure, absolutely. Go ahead, you guys. Like, add the fresh food. Back to basics, raw pet food in Calgary is absolutely amazing. I am not familiar with them, so I'm going to have to take your word for it because I have not done any research on them. Um, my dash hounds love cucumbers, watermelon, and we going crazy over our blueberries in the backyard. Perfect. I love it. Give them all of the vegetables and fruits, not onions, never onions, never grapes. I shouldn't say all, lots though. I had fresh fruits and vegetables and natural treats. Perfect. Um, Brand kibble for okay so there's a couple questions about what's the best kibble what should I feed at this type of dog or this age of dog take a look at our Facebook and Instagram post today we've got blogs on this we talked about it earlier in this session uh, this will be loaded onto our YouTube or you can always go on our Facebook and rewatch but essentially you're looking for nutrient dense uh, protein rich and low carb dry food does not matter who the dog is, how old he is, what kind he is. If we're going to feed kibble, make sure it's premium. Go to our website, check out our what grade is my kibble, so you can always make sure you're feeding an A grade kibble. And this is a good one that lots of people probably wonder and lots of people ask about. Well, here we go, due to poor connection. Facebook, sorry, I lost you. Um, grain free versus grain inclusive food. Grain free versus grain inclusive is never the issue, ever. The whole DCM linked to grain free foods, first of all, was a blog. This is what started this. It was a blog written by Lisa Freeman. 
her blog has been disproven numerous times by actual scientists and veterinarians. Lisa is a vet who works on Purina's payroll. Purina puts out grain inclusive foods. There was motivation financially for Lisa to put this information out there to make people start questioning. You know what happened? Grain free sales went like this, grain inclusive went like that. Who was benefiting? The grain inclusive companies, the, the companies that Lisa Freeman works for. Anyways, there is no, there is no link. This DCM is such a complex issue. There has been no definitive links made, but she came out with her blanket statement that it was BEG foods. BEG is an acronym for boutique, exotic protein, grain free. She could have just said independent pet stores because that's what almost all independent pet stores sell is boutique food, they call it, exotic proteins and grain free foods. Um, but there is no link. The biggest link or the closest link that they've been able to determine between DCM and diet is a lack of taurine. Taurine is an amino acid that is only found in meat. This is why we need a protein rich food. My personal opinion is carnivores, carnivores were never intended to eat grains. So by removing them from their diet, how are we all of a sudden going to impact their health? Um, and finally, this issue has really only blown up, but is starting to bubble over into Canada, but it was really only considered an issue in the US, in the USA. And if grain-free issues were causing heart problems among the canine species, it would have happened worldwide, but it only happened in the States. So this was very uh, deliberate. Um, you know, 80 years ago, there was a huge marketing campaign that you never feed your dog uh, table scraps, never feed them leftovers. It will kill them. The big pet food manufacturers of the day went to great lengths. Might not have been, sorry, might have been 60 years ago. I think it was 60 years ago. Great lengths to do this big smear campaign. Why? Because people were starting to feed food from their own home and pet sales were starting to go down and they went, holy crap, we gotta, we gotta stop the drowning. We better tell people that fresh food from your own kitchen is absolutely horrendous and unsafe for your animal. And all of a sudden pet food sales went up again because people believed you never feed your food dog table scraps. And that's, that's not right. They just got a bad rap because we were feeding the wrong scraps. We we're cutting fat off of meat and going give it to the dog. If we wouldn't need it, why would we give it to them? But give them the right table scraps and that is perfect. Um, okay. I have a dog battling Candida, Candida, Candida. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't know what that is, if that is what it's supposed to be. So I can't help with that. Um, anyways, you guys, uh, I think it has been more than an hour. Not my intended time. I apologize, but that's what happens when I get on a soapbox, which I like to do. Thank you so much for spending some of your Friday afternoon with us. We are here until 6 p.m. tonight. Um, oh, Candida is yeast. Kiefer. Kiefer, then. If that is yeast, that's what we want to do for yeast is kefir. Uh, we need the furry guy to drink the kefir because we need to fix the problem from the inside. We need to rebalance that gut, get those healthy pre and probiotics back in the gut, as well as kefir offers billions and billions and billions of healthy bacteria. So how does this help? The healthy bacteria start to drown out the unhealthy bacteria and get rid of them to replenish the gut with healthy bacteria. Then if we've got like yeast in the ears or yeast on the paws or a little bit of yeast on the belly, we take a little bit of kefir and rub it where they might be irritated to provide them with some external relief. But we have to fix the problem from the inside. So that's what we would do. I have never heard yeast called that. So thank you so much. I learned something today. Can, can did that? I'm gonna have to look at how to pronounce that. Love you guys as well. So to all of the love that we're getting here, thank you very much. Um, okay, one more good probiotic. <laughs> <laughs> a good probiotic, there's a couple. 
Uh, goat's milk and kefir, fantastic sources of natural probiotics. Carnivore also has what is called Carnivore Florophore, which is their ground organic sprouted seeds. Fantastic source of pre and probiotics as well as digestive enzymes. Um, or Adored Beast, which again, you will see in our um, link in bio. <coughs> We have, uh, we sell Adored Beast and we've also hooked up with them that you can go into our link and you can uh, go right to their site and they have fantastic probiotics, healthy gut, gut soothe, Phytos Flora, which is like the Cadillac if you're battling a really bad imbalance, Phytos Flora is the way you can go and you can find that right in our, in our link. Okay, Candida, Candida. Is how I think it's pronounced. Okay, okay. Love from Greece and back at you from Canada. Um, so again, thank you guys so much for spending your afternoon with me. I apologize for rambling on as long as I did. <laughs> and we are here until six o'clock tonight. We are here 11 till six tomorrow. We are closed Sunday and Monday for the statutory holiday. So uh, if you need stuff for the furry guy, get here today, tomorrow, or else you're waiting until Tuesday when we are back in the store at 11. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great long weekend. Bye-bye.